Here, in the middle of the Egyptian desert, something strange is happening. Giant green circles have been appearing across the wasteland, and what looks like a massive river is cutting right through the sand with dozens of smaller canals snaking alongside it. There are tracks that suggest underground pipes, new roads materializing from nowhere, huge buildings rising from the dust. And then we see them, military installations, not just one, but several scattered across this transformed landscape. We decide to investigate ourselves, fly in and have someone show us what's really going on. But the moment people hear what we want to do, they start backing out. Some seem genuinely afraid for their safety. No one will talk. What we've stumbled onto leads us from these mysterious green circles to massive construction projects carved from sand at record speed, to wild plans to flood the desert, to a repressive regime and a country in economic freefall, all connected to a multi-billion dollar project that claims to feed the population while secretly pursuing entirely different goals. Our research starts simply enough on Google Maps. We find green circles scattered across Egypt, including deep in the desert. They don't look that impressive at first, but when you zoom in, you realize these circles must be hundreds of meters wide. Nearby, you can already see outlines of new circles etched into the sand. We pull up NASA satellite images and discover most of these circles have appeared within just the last 10 years. The description mentions a name, the New Delta. The New Delta is a massive agricultural project run by the Egyptian government, meant to boost farming, reduce food imports, create jobs, and improve the country's food supply. The plan is to transform almost 10,000 square kilometers of barren wasteland into fertile farmland. Since nearly the entire country is desert, only around 4% of Egypt's land can be used for agriculture, a tiny percentage for a nation of 116 million people, more than any other country in the Arab world. By 2050, that number is expected to hit 175 million. The vast majority lives along a narrow strip beside the Nile and up in the Nile Delta on the Mediterranean coast. It's one of the most densely populated regions on the planet where people, farms and factories compete for scarce land near water. The New Delta could theoretically expand Egypt's arable land by nearly a quarter, and the country desperately needs it. Food security has been tight for years, 8.5% of the population is undernourished, one in five children suffer from stunted growth due to malnutrition. Many staple foods, especially wheat, must be imported. In 2021, about 80% of Egypt's wheat came from just two countries, Russia and Ukraine. When Russia invaded a year later, wheat shipments ground to a halt and Egypt's fragile food situation spiraled further. But our online research hits a dead end, so we decide to fly there ourselves. That's when things get complicated. The moment people hear we want to film, they back out one by one. It's too risky, they say. One expert admits he's worried about his personal safety. We try everything, but no one will talk. There's a reason for the silence. The new Delta isn't run by some company or even a government department. It's being pushed by the military. To understand why that matters, you have to understand Egypt's recent history. In early 2011, hundreds of thousands take to Cairo's streets demanding the end of the regime, protesting corruption, violence, and economic crisis. After 18 days, autocratic President Hosni Mubarak resigns after nearly 30 years in power. Millions celebrate. The country holds its first democratic elections in 2012, voting for Mohamed Morsi. But just one year later, mass protests erupt again until Morsi is overthrown by the military. What follows is a massacre. Soldiers kill over 1,000 demonstrators during a brutal crackdown. The man behind the coup is General Abdel Fattah el-Sisi. 
he officially runs for office in 2014 against a token opponent, winning with around 97% of votes. Independent observers suspect the election was rigged. The new president promises stability, security, and economic growth. Instead, he steers the country back into dictatorship. Peaceful protests are treated as terrorism. The press is silenced. Government critics and journalists are persecuted, arrested, tortured. Thousands remain behind bars today, and many have simply vanished. Speaking out means putting your life on the line. That same regime controls the new Delta, just like virtually every public construction project. To talk about it, we have to look outside the country. We meet Edmund Bauer, a journalist in Dubai who writes for The Guardian and published an article on El Sisi's desert project. There's very little concrete information coming out of Egyptian sources about these projects, he tells us. Other than that, they're great projects covering a lot of land. David Sims, an urban planner and economist, adds context. You could say it has to do with a certain imagery of pioneer spirit. We can conquer the desert. This has been around for a long time. Over the past century, there have been multiple proposals to flood the desert. The Katara Depression, a natural lowland where parts lie 133 meters below sea level, sparked ideas for a massive lake roughly the size of Lake Ontario. In 1926, a British geologist proposed digging tunnels from the Mediterranean so seawater could flow in, evaporate in the desert heat, and power turbines in a continuous cycle. The costs were too high. In the 1970s, a German engineer proposed detonating 213 nuclear bombs to blow up the stretch between the depression and the sea. Most recently, in 2023, an Egyptian consulting firm was hired for a feasibility study. The project remains a pipe dream. Costs are astronomical, and there's serious risk of salting the groundwater. In the 1960s, President Gamal Abdel Nasser laid groundwork for the Tushka project, reclaiming huge desert stretches for farming, industry, and housing. The project was revived and expanded under Mubarak in the 1990s, tapping man-made Lake Nasa to pump water into new canals. Tushka was touted as reclaiming half a million acres, Sims says. It was pitched as the solution to Egypt's demographic and economic problems around 2000 to 2004. Then it appeared that almost none of it was ever done. Recent satellite images show some scattered fields, but the promised megacities never materialized. Then there's the Sinai project from the late 90s, another plan to reclaim desert areas for agriculture. Part of a canal was built, but most never materialized due to problems from soil salinization to coastal erosion. So every Egyptian ruler needs these mega-projects to anchor their success and popularity, but most fail. Will the new delta work this time? To grow anything here, you need water. Lots of it. The project draws from multiple sources, groundwater, polluted water from a lake near Alexandria, and most importantly, the Nile. Google Earth shows the first canal running about 42 kilometers from the Rosetta branch to the new delta's eastern limits, with smaller canals snaking across the sand. The second canal is even more impressive, about 114 kilometers long, carrying a supposed 3.5 billion cubic meters of water yearly. The water moves above and below ground from station to station, but it doesn't just flow downhill. In some places, it must be pumped over 100 meters up. They're taking it off the Nile at 16 meters altitude and have to pump it up to 120 or 130 meters. Sims explains. Pumping stations push water to Bahar al-Bakar, the world's largest wastewater treatment plant, built in just two years and completed in June 2023. It sprawls across 320,000 square meters with 15 massive basins that purify up to 7.5 million cubic meters of wastewater daily, enough for the daily water needs of 24 million Americans. The project also taps another source. Far below the desert, 
lies the world's largest fossil groundwater reservoir, the Nubian Sandstone Aquifer System, holding between 150,000 and 370,000 cubic kilometers of water, more than the Nile would discharge over 500 years. But there's a catch. When we talk about the aquifer, it's tempting to think of it as a big tank of water, Bauer says. You can put a straw in it and water comes out. That's not what this is. No one knows how much can actually be used, and the deeper you go, the saltier it gets. It's not sustainable. You're dealing with water which probably isn't replenished. Water from all these sources flows through underground pipelines to cultivation areas. That's where the green circles appear. Their shape comes from center pivot irrigation systems, water sprinklers sweeping across fields like clock hands. You'll find these worldwide in Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and the US. They allow people to grow corn, peanuts, potatoes, and wheat in the desert, but it's not very efficient and you need massive amounts of water. The desert soil is far less fertile than the Nile's riverbanks. These land reclamation projects usually only have one crop a year, Sims notes. It's too hot, whereas in the old lands, you get two or three crops yearly. If you look at pictures from above, Bauer says, you'll see circles of green surrounded by land which is still desert. In fact, under the topsoil where crops are grown, it is still desert. If you take away the central pivot systems irrigating these circles, it will go back to being desert. Nothing has changed. The project is overseen by a government agency reporting directly to the Egyptian Air Force. How much it costs is anyone's guess. It's a black box, Bauer says. We don't know how much money has gone in, how much is coming out, or where that money is going. Running agriculture in the middle of the desert doesn't come cheap. You need processing plants, warehouses, roads, cold storage, grain silos, and artificial rivers. According to The Guardian, the longest canal alone costs around $5 billion. Some earlier studies concluded that if you have to lift water more than 30 meters, it's uneconomic, Sims explains. You cannot grow things with value that will cover the energy cost. In 2021, the project had a budget of roughly 10.2 billion dollars. By May 2025, President El Sisi said infrastructure alone would cost between 9 and 13 billion dollars. We have to go on bits and pieces released in speeches and press statements, Bauer says. There isn't clear records being produced. The new delta was pitched as Egypt's answer to food insecurity. But what has it actually changed? In one sense, this has been successful. You can see crops coming out of it, Sims says. But much of the harvest never reaches Egyptians' plates. It's exported. According to the government, Egypt now exports over 400 agricultural products to more than 160 countries. In 2023 alone, a record 7.5 million tons left the country, bringing in $8.8 .8 million in revenue. The focus seems to be, and Sisi has more or less said this himself, why would we grow wheat, which we're not competitive in, which needs lots of water and land, whereas we can grow citrus crops, export them for much more money, and use that to import wheat, Sims explains. That's what most countries in this situation would do. But the revenue from these multi-billion dollar projects doesn't seem to reach ordinary Egyptians. Two-thirds of the population live at or below the poverty line. Food security remains fragile. Egypt's state coffers are empty, the currency has collapsed, and the country is drowning in debt. Bauer says most money flows back into the state, and one thing they've consistently invested in is weapons. The new delta devours massive resources. It's not sustainable, extremely expensive, and nowhere near delivering promised food security. If you're looking at producing food to feed the country, it will be difficult based on using these projects, Sims says. Maybe the real value isn't about food at all. These mega-projects generate headlines and distract from real problems. 
the regime gets to present itself as capable and proactive. You can make an announcement, give an artist's rendition, quickly claim credit for something, Bauer explains. On the surface, it looks like a great answer to lots of intractable problems with growing population and poverty that would be difficult to address in other ways. It's clear why it would be more tempting to unveil new large-scale projects rather than take a systemic approach building institutions. Earlier this year, the government unveiled its latest mega-project, Ras El Hikma City, a brand new city rising from the desert, expected to feature luxury apartments, a yacht harbor, skyscrapers up to 80 stories, and a free economic zone. The era of desert mega-projects seems far from over. Meanwhile, in February 2022, Ethiopia completed a massive gravity dam, its walls as high as the pyramids of Giza, holding back the Blue Nile, the Nile's most important tributary. Ethiopia plans to double its energy production. What marks a milestone for Ethiopia sparks panic downstream. Egypt and Sudan fear they'll receive far less water. The Egyptian government calls the dam an existential threat. Relations are tense. The Nile remains Egypt's lifeline. It has to keep flowing for Cairo's ambitious plans to have any chance. In the end, the dream of greening the desert hinges on a single precious resource, water.